ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار verily all praises due to allah we praise him seek his help and ask for his forgiveness we seek refuge in allah from the evil in ourselves and from our sinful deeds whosoever allah guides no one can mislead and whosoever allah allows to stray no one can guide and i bear witness that there's none worthy of worship except allah he's one having no partners and i bear witness that muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is his servant and messenger to proceed verily the truest speech is the book of allah and the best guidance is the guidance of muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the words of affairs of the newly invented matters and religion and every newly invented matter and religion is a heresy and every heresy leads us astray and everything that leads us astray leads to the hellfire i would like to begin by saying that many of us have identified this time that we're living in as one of the most challenging times for muslims here in america perhaps outside of the time when muslims were imported as slaves here out, outside of this time and these last few decades we can easily say that this is the most challenging time at a time of mass islamophobia in which either you find people being suspicious or fearful or people actually hating many people have told me that they've directly been told or indirectly go back home or something to this type of statement many sisters have asked is it okay to remove the hijab because they feel threatened and many brothers have asked or have said that when they go to the masjid and enter the salah their mind wanders a little bit because of fear and no doubt it is logical fear i mean just a few weeks ago i gave uh, a khutbah in a masjid that had four bullet holes uh, and many of the masjids even here in our city have been vandalized and not only that a time of hostility and a time in which some say unfortunately also i feel voiceless so you have this frustration you have this challenge and many people ask what do we do and on top of that before we get to what do we do and people are asking for uh, advice they say on top of that i feel voiceless because if i for example say voice some opinion about some things that are going on that i don't like to say foreign affairs or foreign uh, policies or whatever just something in politics then i fear that i'm going to be categorized with these people who are extreme with the fanaticals with the with those people who are misguided they're going to say oh this rhetoric your 
Uh, it sounds very similar to those guys. Oh, you're so unpatriotic. And no doubt this is a conundrum or this is a, 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 um, a position that many are in also, that there's some people, some things that we don't like. And so some of the response has been just to assimilate even more. Okay, everything's okay. Uh, all this is fine. Let's just hold hands and let me be more like you and just show you not my value and, and, and diversity, which America appreciates. But let me just, out of fear of conflict and hostility, let me just assimilate and keep quiet. Honestly, the, the, the scope of this question of what to do in this time is too great for a khutbah. However, I think that we should look at one incident of the Prophet's life and looking at this. And again, many people have asked this question. This is a challenging time. Imams are talking about how to properly respond. And I think if we look at the most challenging time in the Prophet's awesome life, a time that is somewhat similar to our life, Islamophobia and conflict and, and what have you, fear. If we look at the Prophet's awesome time of most challenging time, I think it will give us great insight on how to reflect on our time. And this is beautiful that the Prophet Sallallahu shared with us. Asked by Aisha radiallahu anha, what was the most difficult moment in your life? She thought obviously it would be Uhud, in which there was so much difficulty to, to, to deal with. But the Prophet mentioned it was Ta'if. It was early in Islam. It was during a time of persecution, a time in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam just recently lost Khadija radiallahu anha, his beloved wife, and lost Abu Talib, his beloved uncle, and he died upon Kufr, died not accepting his message, though he was a great protector. So he went to Ta'if because they were influential and they humiliated him or attempted to humiliate him. And so he suffered not only physical torment, they actually <clears throat> got, obviously, the, the children and the servants to throw stones and the Prophet actually bled. And he was ridiculed by the chiefs there as well. And I don't think many of us have experienced anything close to this, where he was actually fearful of his life. He had to run and publicly embarrassed. And the Prophet ﷺ was a human being, and he said, I was dazed for a period of time. And this was the most difficult time in the Prophet's life, telling us. And we know the most challenged person in the world was the Prophet ﷺ, because we are told that those who, the Prophet ﷺ, are tested the most. And then, an amthal, you know, the Tumul Amthal, those who have. The, the, the strongest iman after that. So the Prophet tells us that he was challenged, in essence, more than anyone else, and that was the most challenging time. Something that doesn't even compare to our time. We, have, we don't have persecution like that. We're not publicly uh, harassed. But amazing, this is the response, and this is really what I want to concentrate on. An angel came down, we all know the story, and basically said, I can take care of them for you. And that's what they deserve, to treat someone who came to help them, who came concerned about them, came as a mercy, but yet they tortured or uh, caused him to bleed, tried to, to humiliate him, and the Prophet them, didn't focus on his right, didn't become spiteful, even though he would have been uh, rightful, or uh, that would have been okay for him to do this, obviously. But he was more concerned about the truth being manifested. He was more concerned about the people. Amazing. This is Islam. During the, time, the most difficult time, the response to hostility, the response to persecution, the response to Islamophobia was caring about the people and being focused on the people, being focused on the truth and being focused on the truth and the mercy be manifested. 
Allah says that we did not send you except to be a mercy to mankind. If we claim to practice Islam, then our existence, Islam by extension, should be a mercy to mankind. And we also should be concerned about the people, not about ourselves, not about our positions, not about how people view us, but we should be focused on the people. This is what Islam says. This is the story that we all know about. This was the most challenging time in the Prophet's life, and this is how he responded. Very difficult. Very difficult, but that's the mindset that we have to have. Despite the fact that there are hurtful statements that are made, but most of those statements that we know that are made are made out of ignorance because we are part of the problem, meaning that we, not ed we haven't educated the people. And we know that. And I, I've, I've shared with the incidents in which I've met people, the most hateful people people who are very guilty of bigotry and Islamophobia, just would one sitting have changed their mind. You may not even get maybe one sitting. It may take uh, more, or maybe, maybe they won't. But this should be our mindset. This is the ideal response. This is the response from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And even after the battle of Uhud, which was very, very difficult, also the Prophet was, one person said, what, I mean, basically curse these people. I mean, they have injured the Prophet, they have done this, they have done that. And the Prophet said, I have not been sent as one who cursed the people, but I've been sent to be a mercy to people. These people physically, I mean, literally killed and tortured and killed Hamza. Imagine how emotionally difficult this is, and yet the Prophet thought about this. Islam teaches us to be real men and women. And it's, it's easy to say I'm a Muslim, but to act like a Muslim and to know what Islam is, is amazing. It's difficult. Likewise, even it is said that the Prophet, after this, there was a, there was a much longer story, but we'll just mention that it was related that the Prophet actually asked Allah to forgive them because they don't know better after they did all of this. And again, imagine the worst day in your life, the, someone who's actually doing something very spiteful. I've heard many people, I've heard spouses saying, I'm going to never forgive you, never forget about what you said. And they bring it up, you know, 10 years later. But do you remember? Oh, come on, can we forget about this, honey? I mean, this is the one you love the most, and they won't forget or forgive. And someone who intended to hurt you, uh, you have to forgive and overlook. So, and, and think about this. This is even what we say in this in, 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 in America. Don't go to their level. Don't scoop down to their level. Overlook it. Don't be like them. So we have the option of responding to this negativity with negativity, or we can respond to it with that which is better. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, amazingly, again, how could <clears throat> Islam has this rep of being a, a, a religion of <clears throat> mercilessness, a, a, a religion of not caring, a religion of being spiteful and angry? It's just the opposite. The Quran starts off with, in the name of Allah, Ar-Rahman Rahim. And Allah tells us to repel evil with good. Even, and this is a statement that we say here too, kill them with kindness. It works. It's hard. Allah says, وَلَا يَسْتَوِي الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيَّةُ That evil and good, or hasana, good and evil, are not at the same level. إِدْفَعْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ Repel evil not with evil, as they say here, right? don't, two wrongs don't make a right. Repel evil with that which is good. And if you do so, and this is the point, and this is the, 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 my main point of the khutbah, is if we are able to get to this level where we're not really thinking about ourselves, we're thinking about the other person, whether that person be our spouse, our family member, our friend, our Muslim, or a non-Muslim, we repel evil with good if we do this, فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةٌ كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌّ حَمِيمٌ And we have read this verse over and over again, amazing verse. It is not extracted, I mean, it is explicit. I mean, it's not something that we hear or Islam says this. I mean, the Qur'an, Allah says it very explicitly. 
if you do this, if you reach this level in which you repel evil with good, then you will find the person who there was hostility between you and him. To I know as if he is your close bosom friend, bosom buddy, as if he's a close friend, as if he's your best friend. If you kill them with kindness, you have to just try. But you won't experience this. You won't know about this. You won't have this unless you have patience. Only those who suffer will see this. And no one will experience this except for someone with a great future of fortune. But let us try this. And not just with Islamophobia, but also with our internal conflicts, um, you know, inside the master with one another and what have you. But this is what Islam is about. And this is, again, it's not some statement or some statement of a scholar which is respected, but this is explicit words from, uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, just two more points before <clears throat> we um, close. But likewise, this is the message of Ramadan. Ramadan wasn't too far off, believe it or not. <laughs> it may seem that way, you no know, time flies. But one of the messages was, one of the themes of Ramadan is to, is to seek Allah's forgiveness, is to overlook. And the dua that we said, on the most blessed night of the year was Allahumma innaka afu wa tuhibbul afa fa'afu anna Oh Allah, you love to overlook. You love to pardon, so forgive us. And Allah tells us, interesting, because I wanted to try to link this, that Allah tells us, even though it's talking about something totally different, it's actually talking about uh, marriage and divorce, the maha, but Allah says, wa in ta'afu aqrabu taqwa to overlook, to forego your right, is closer to piety. So this partnering, overlooking, and foregoing your right for a better good is closer. Aqrabu lit taqwa. Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about assuming this mindset. Wasari'u ila maghfiratin min rabbikum wa jannatin awdu has samawatu wal awdu u'iddat lin muttaqeen. And rush, be quick in the race for forgiveness from your Lord in a garden as wide as are the heavens and earth prepared for the muttaqin. Interestingly, this was what Ramadan is about, right? We practiced and we went through 30 days for la'allakum tattaqun. The whole purpose of the whole intentions, and the Imam Nadim was talking about intentions uh, in the first khutbah, was for us to gain piety. Again, the message of Ramadan. So Allah tells us to seek forgiveness from your Lord so that perhaps you may be of the people of taqwa. And then Allah describes in a limited description who are the people who have taqwa. Very interesting. Alladheena yunfiquna fi sarra'i wa dharra. Those who spend in good times and bad times, meaning when it's easy and when it's difficult. They spend and care about the people and sacrifice when it's easy for them and when it's difficult for them. Sometimes it's even just hard to spend even when it's easy for you. And you know, um, that, that's no, no doubt the case. But we are people who are supposed to have big hearts all the time. And we care about the people. We focus on the people. And this is what Ramadan is all about, altruism selflessness, thinking about others. You're supposed to try to rid yourself of this greed. So this thing that we're talking about today is a thing that hopefully we want to resurrect and make sure we take it with us outside of Ramadan. So, And those who restrain their anger. And those who, this word, again, and then we say, Allahumma inna ka'afu. But anyway, وَالْعَافِينَ عَنَ النَّاسِ And those who pardon people, those who forego their right, those who forgive. وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And Allah loves to do us the good. The Allah loves those who are on this level of ihsan. And that's what we're always trying to do. We're trying to be the best. And in conclusion, 
uh, to just quickly wrap up what we have said is that many have rightfully complained that this is a, a difficult time, a challenging time, a time in which, I mean, we're faced either directly or indirectly very uh, hurtful words. Some people, I mean, um, I know women who have actually, and many unfortunately targets are, are women who have been ran off the road or, or uh, have been, um, obscenities have been shouted at them and all types of things. I mean, a woman just was told, even though you can say this is another in issue, just a couple of days ago she was wearing a niqab and basically said that you need to get out of here. Of course, some excuse was made, but the point is, is that how do we respond? And there's also, I mean, there's things that are going on that may affect our countries uh, and, and what have you that we may not uh, like that we, in, in every country, and even, even as Sherman Jackson said in his prayer at the DNC, that you know we're not a perfect nation, and I, I don't think any uh, politician would say that. So sometimes we want to provide a, a, advice um, as well, but how do we do this? How do we respond to uh, these mistakes, or this negativity, or this hatred, and this bigotry? Ideally, we responded, ideal, the ideal response should be to respond, respond the way the Prophet responded, and that is, you You respond to that which is bad with that which is better. You try to really be concerned about the people. And if you are, there will be a good outcome. This is a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and obviously, and even... Um, <clears throat> We should be more concerned about the truth. We should be more concerned about the greater good and showing that Islam is really rahmatan lil alameen, even if it be that maybe we, we uh, suffer some discomfort or what have you. And if we do so, even logically, and we mention a lot of statements that even this society, we would say don't go to their level. So logically, we know that this is the right response. And this is what we need to be thinking about on a, uh, on a, a grand level, a national level, and even um, on a local level. And just in the second part of the khutbah, I just want to quickly uh, address, if we respond to evil with evil, what can be the, the consequence? I call the call out, astaghfirullah li wa laikum lisa'in wa sallim, fa astaghfiru innahu wa rahim. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. <clears throat> so, now if we say, hey, I'm just more concerned about my right, or we respond to this frustration, this frustration with frustration. Then what we have is similar to what ha happened a few weeks ago here in Dallas. With, for example, the Black Lives Matter movement. Now, the vast majority of people here in America, even those the very far right, such as Newt Gingrich, and I don't like calling out people's name, have even said that this is a problem. And that, and even he said, and he, he was, was uh, the Speaker of the House, he said during the time of Bill Clinton that white folks don't appreciate, um, you know, the, the safety uh, that they, they have relative to African-American black males, for example. So anyway, the, the point is that this is... Uh, a, a movement that is addressing an issue that almost, that no one denies it is an injustice, that it is a problem. However, you had one person frustrated, angry, so he said, hey, I'm going to, a'udhu billah, go to their level. And he tried to shoot, and he did, and he killed uh, several cops who were, um, he was trying to shoot uh, a, 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 any white person, basically. No doubt that he is, his frustration is noted. But Allah says, So you repel the evil to go through interview, to go through town hall meetings, to do this a slow way. It's a proper way. And sometimes to even, you know, uh, try to kill people with, with kindness. You know, you have these hugs uh, type of uh, sessions and what, what have you. But anyway, the point is that this is, what happened? I mean, similar to what we, what unfortunately some people who claim to be Muslim do. But what happened? Now the movement who are, it's already been attacked. Oh, these guys are thugs. Oh, black life doesn't matter. 
Blue Lives Matter and at the RNC. I mean, even at a national level, the response was to, that it became worse for their movement and for what he wanted to do. The response when he didn't respond to, uh, by what is better, responding to an injustice, with, with, uh, uh, what, what is better is that it became much worse. Even interesting, look at what happened in, in College Station, the place where they had uh, this four bullet holes. These people, a lot, only Allah knows their intentions, perhaps to intimidate the Muslims and to maybe galvanize the people that they shouldn't feel comfortable and maybe to chase some people out. What happened was that many people came in support of the Muslims and they made a symbolic ring around uh, the masjid and sh wanted to show and it went viral to show these people that just the opposite now we are with them where we uh, rebuke you and we are against you and you have more people going against them if, 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 if you follow what I'm saying then even before the, 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 the khutbah we had some priests come people who didn't even have any connection with the masjid so it's amazing almost and I, I'm, I'm mentioning two things uh, that are, that are even on, on none of us want to obviously do with Muslim, but just show you in general when you repel evil with evil, what happens? A lot of times you're not able to, even when you go for your rights, you're not able to contain yourself. We know that transgression is 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 is, a, is an abomination in Islam, is a transgression in 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 and of itself. So it is better for us to assume, especially in this. Uh, in, in this time frame, that which is ideal and that which is ihsan, to respond to evil with that which is better. And I conclude by saying that we really have to simply care. We have to care about the people. And we have to be not selfish. And this was the, 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 the theme of Ramadan. And then it will just reflect. If we really cared about the people, the people would love us. We would really be making differences in people's lives and not just our people, not just our refugees. We have to care about the people. We can't blame the people. I've many, and I've said this many times, non-Muslims who say interesting things. I see you guys, and I work with you guys. Sometimes it's, you know, you're selling things in the, in, in the urban neighborhoods that are not very good. You're doing this. We can't be selfish people. And if we're suffering the repercussions, we have to look at that and say, to a certain extent, maybe Allah is trying to wake us up. And I know that's very harsh for me to say. And I feel that I'm part of that. But I think it is rightfully said. And I've heard people say, you know, and this maybe will, will be the, the, the conclusion. We'll, we'll seal this point that I'm trying to make. Oh, people came to me and almost, I'm almost crying because of this. They said, man, I really didn't care about black folks. I came to America and knew exactly your narrative and this, but I didn't care because I came here with a purpose. I mean, I was told this by several people. But now, since I am suffering trans, transgressions or, or discrimination, man, I care now. Wow, I didn't really focus on that. I really, really didn't care because it wasn't affecting me, it wasn't affecting my family, my people, my mission. I didn't care, but now, man, I'm the bad guy. I'm the boogeyman. I get stopped. Now they're asking me this and that when I travel. Oh, and now I'm starting to complain. And I say how hypocritical of myself. I didn't give a care about you people. I didn't give a care about injustice. And now when I'm treated unjust, now I want the world to care about me. So many people came to me, and that shows you how big of a heart we have. And I think when anything happens to us, that's the way we have to look at it. We have to look into ourselves and not into others. And that's a good thing. The Allah is waking us up. And Allah says that even in the Quran that these things happen. That you may return back to Allah. And I think all of us have some guilt and all of us can do more. And I think a lot of this is out of ignorance. And we just have to educate the people and do a better job. And we should be optimistic. I'm optimistic. And we should be optimistic and focus on the good. And may Allah make us 
of those who are successful in this world and the hereafter. Ibadullah, inna Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu tasluna. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Innaka hamidun majid. Allahumma a'iza al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. وأذل الشرك والمشركين ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غل للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين وقم الصلاة